Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to pick up back with the Garretts guarding the entrance to uh, to the rocket. And before we get too far, I gotta go back to the Eagle and get some info for the people back at the bed and breakfast. <laughs> This letter, meter. Meter for detecting radiation. You hold the plastic electronic device before the massive eagle and press the button at the center of its face. The arm on the display meter oscillates for a moment before flashing orange and settling near a 45 degree angle. Anticlimactic. I know I have I have some orbs, right? From the eyes of John. Let's see if that'll get me past the garrets. Mm. Yeah, unless you're the one. Okay, we talked about that. Leave. Okay. Um. His head, coordinate letter. Okay. I got the head here. I pointed at the thing here. There's the duck blinds, and I can't get over here. Yes, you can. Uh, okay. okay, let's go all the way back and uh, talk to these people. Yes, what is it? Did you give me my readings? Return the meter. Well, researcher stares at the meter with a neutral expression. Has a look. Anything like Fat City Node? Not quite. There's evidence of radiation, but not the frequency detected in Fat City. Well, Dallas, your quack coin might bounce back after all. Let's be on our guard. We need to get a reading on the Gretna Node. Start packing. Let's go. The woman turns to you. Keep the key. We won't be needing it. Now please leave. Ugh. Okay. So what is there to do now? Yeah, I did all this already. And there's no... There's no way to leave here. So I've missed something. What did I miss? Glass eyes discovered in the sunken head. Okay, yeah. Man's head discovered in the lake. Let's go. And I guess. Uh, well. Unless that old guy knows something. Maybe his dialogue changed? Nope. Okay. Anything else at Eagle Pond? Maybe I use the eyeballs at Eagle Pond. Give him back to... Oh, oh. Hmm. You slot the eyes into the bird's empty sockets. Oh, here we go. Bruh. Bruh! That bird just puked out a floating ball. Miss Peach used to tell us all the time they got aliens in this lake. Hell's doing to you. Almost looks like it's giving you a sniff. The sphere shrinks down and buries itself inside your coat. Whoa, now. Looks like you made a friend. Stone joined the party. Be careful carrying that ball around your pocket, okay? 
Don't let plastic out your eyes. Shit. Feel kind of sorry for the big bird, bro. First time I see an alien do that to a bird. All the heat coming off this thing starting to make my skin itch. Let's roll. Hmm. Yeah, let's roll. Maybe I should have pointed the thing at the eagle. Well, duck. After I did that. <laughs> Oops. Alright. Pop. Okay, four. Hello, buddy. Bonk, yes, yes, floating ball. Miss Peachy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see him sniff. Oh, now, be careful. Kind of sorry. Okay, all the heat coming off this thing starting to make my skin itch. Let's go. Now, build a plastic device for the massive eagle and press the button in the center of its face. The arm on display meter oscillates for a moment before flashing red. Yes. And sitting near a 160 degree angle. It was different. I'm glad I came back. Let's get out of here. Um, I will go back right now and give it to him. Turn the meter. Unbelievable. The researcher stares at the meter with the mouth agape. Same as the Fat City node. Something is destroying the entire system. Well, Dallas, I don't think your quack coin will be bouncing back anytime soon. <laughs> There's nothing funny about this, Peter. Hey, I didn't say. Each one of these nodes will be bleeding high-frequency radiation across the entire region. Do you understand that? That's what the data implies, yes. And treat this with the gravity it deserves. We need to get a reading on the Gretna node tonight. Start packing. Let's go. The woman turns to you. Keep the key. We won't be needing it. Now please leave. All right. Well, a changed change the story we got, but I don't know if it's going to have like a major change on the story as a whole. I'll cut out all this. Get us back to the Garrets. Okay. We got it. We got the thing. What thing? The fucking the, the thing you just talked about, bro. Okay? Show him. Show him the ball. Flashy flash. That's it? Is that it? This light is nourishing and divine. I can see the crystalline texture of everything that surrounds me. The wisdom that was planted in the furrows of the Maker's Garden arrests every fiber of my flesh in a tense ecstasy from which I desire no release. Uh, same. I'm going to bust. Flood me with another kiss, I'm begging you. I'm on the edge just one more time. Please, God. Sure. Ooh. Melt in their brains. There was a swamp and a lake and a refinery, and the K had no face. I am the one. There was the thing. Uh, there was the thing that was, and the thing that wasn't, and what wasn't was the bird. The bird knew all things. Too many burned. There is a great coming apart of this world. Can you see it? The coming apart so that the light that was hidden in the salt can shine again. I am the sun. I was the one in the mall. I am the one in the swamp. But who would be in the swamp and not fly your mother's corpse into the stars as a benediction where prayers collide? What? Who would not follow your mother down the ditch if I were the light? If I were the man who presides over the night, this ditch man night, I am the one. Let me in, Kay, I who shine. I am the lake, I am the sun. I am the good news in the hour of eternity, and the evening without end, I am the one. Oh, so, y'all mind we squeeze by right quick? <laughs> what? Oh, you got the messenger? Nice, you can just pass. Ditch man's waiting. Hey, Rhett! Yeah. 
Radio to base. Let them know the messenger's on its way. Come in, ground control. This is Duck Blinds. Ground control, come in. Garrett? Why is no one answering over there? Probably just prepping for lunch. You two are free to take your boat through this pass. As soon as we get someone from base on the radio, we'll let them know you're coming. Hmm... Something is foot. What did Ditch Man do? What do we have here? You sink into the shallow depths and begin the routine of dredging its bottoms with your fingers. Something wet and sponge-like distinguishes itself from the silt. You take it in hand and return to the boat. Having climbed over the gun ball, you observe the object that you discovered in the waning evening light. Hey, monkey returns your gaze. His eyes now empty of any knowing or evidence of life. Got another toy, okay? You rotten head need a friend to play with? That's nice. There's no infinite stare left in the stuffed toy. You place him in your bag. All right. Welcome back, monkey. What? Oh shit. Keith's in the ring. What an evening has been in Norco, folks. I just left Shield's exclusive carnival ball where Laura St. Clair was found dead in her office. And the corpse of disgraced academic Catherine Madre, no friends to the St. Clair family, was exhumed from the Red Church mausoleum. Coincidence? Keith sure doesn't think so. Top it all off, the charismatic social media influencer Kerner John has announced that tonight he'll be launching a home-brewed spacecraft from right here in the La Branche wetlands. John and his disciples were able to erect this engineering behemoth in complete secrecy despite sitting squarely in the flight path of Armstrong International Airport. Does it in there? Not quite. An inside source tells me that a war is brewing among rival fractions of Kerner John's disciples, the infamous Garretts. An unfamiliar figure named Ditchman has emerged to challenge John's reign amidst the discord. And John, rarely caught off stream, is nowhere to be found. That's because guy that's because I got his head in the boat. Who will win the war of the Garrets? Who killed Laura St. Clair? Was it the same culprit who exhumed the recently entombed body of Catherine Madre? Where is Keener John? Will he manage to get his junker off the ground? Keep your eyes on the ring, because Keith's got him cornered in Keith's Corner. Good job, Keith. Nice website, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. We're in Burning Man. <laughs> Roland. Roland? Greetings. Costume figure keeps his attention focused on the distant crowd. Take the costume. I thank you. I assembled it from a mess of discarded things. I came over with a group of others from Shield's Carnival Ball. Police and private security were swarming the facility as I left. A disturbance of some kind. Perfect evening to launch a rocket with the cops already tied up at the refinery. What happened to the refinery? Another attendant of the ball said there was an explosion. Though I didn't see or hear anything from within the Good Hope Plantation, perhaps we'll find out more in the evening news. And so here I am, from one circus to the next. This, uh, rocket, these people, uh, what do you make of it? They want to leave this world. Who can blame them? It's true. No one is satisfied here. We're trapped in this limbo. A long twilight that bleeds out to the edge of time where even the most fantastic thing becomes banal. This gray blanket of stale time, stagnant, lonely time. To puncture it, puncture a hole in it. I understand the appeal. I do. I hear you, buddy. Right, what are you guys talking about? What a circus. 
How'd you hear about it? Text from a friend. Did you bring a kayak or anything? Someone let me float over the raft. Someone let me float over on the raft. What about you? Flavable mattress. Worth it. I'd do anything to watch these little shits explode. <laughs> SpaceX, it is not, I'm sure. Failed Garrett. I always wanted to be a Garrett. I installed the app, but never could find the readings. Followed those guys online. They never followed me back, but that's fine. I'm starting to think all the Garrett's might die tonight. All might die? Why? This whole thing is a huge mess. No one knows who's steering the ship. Literally, half the Garrett's defected. The rest seem to be losing their minds. I hear the Garrett's inside the Ark. The engineers are holding it together. But this isn't what space travel is supposed to look like, is it? Half-assed like this? Seems bad. We're looking for my brother. Who's your brother? A guy named Blake. A little drugged out dude with bad facial hair. We think these rocket freaks kidnapped him. Wow, I don't know anything about that. This picture just gets worse and worse. All right. I gotta be coming out to Lake Moore. I got big monster birds, aliens, spaceships. Bro, they got it all. Hey, I know you. Mm-hmm. Actually, before we go too far. Your mom was investigating reports of construction in the lake before she died. You determined that the unpermitted construction in question was related to a spacecraft deep in the wetlands that surrounded Lake Pontchartrain. Oh, he was building his, his rocket. His little rocket. The man in the ditch was Garrett's new daddy. The man in the ditch beheaded Keener John to secure this place as the leader of the Garrett's and take control of the Ark. All right, yeah, yeah. Your ma saw something in the lake. Super Duck ate it. Maybe Super Duck consumed the vessel of light to gain power or wisdom, but it only destroyed the network in the end. Ah, nice. Good job. Good job, little buddy. Super Duck is dying. The Super Duck node in the lake vomited out a luminescent sphere that seemed to play a role in the network's decay. Anything more here? There it is, yeah. Nothing else? Yeah, Thomas St. Clair, right there. <laughs> what do you guys say? Hey, welcome to the uh, party. Why are there so many people here? I was wondering that myself. A friend of mine saw something online about a little mall Nazis trying to launch a rocket. We weren't doing anything else, so we came to see for ourselves. This word got out. How'd you get out here? Yeah, everyone got out of here but me. I had to get this stupid rock. Oh yeah, that part was a mess. The rocket nerds tried to build a road from Keener into the lake by dumping a bunch of oyster shells in the marsh. As soon as the car started using it, the road sunk straight into the water. A friend of mine's car is sitting half flooded at the parish line. But all these other people drove from the city with kayaks, canoes, inflatable rafts, what have you. We parked in some neighborhood along the lakefront and walked as far down their janky road as we could until some guy in a ski mask picked us up on a raft made out of, like, action figures and stuff. No clue how we're getting back. <laughs> cool, man. More people from the party. Wow, I'm in the swamp. This is unbelievable. The majesty of this place. It's so inspiring. So it's pretty cool. We just taken a dive underneath the bridge and found the whole car down there. You're a diver? So are you like a real swamp person? Yeah, bro. 
I've been in these swamps my whole life. My dad used to make us shit off the boat. Oh. Said we was chumming the waters. Way to kill the conversation. LeBlanc. How do these goofy mall freaks build something like this, man? Doesn't make any sense. What I heard is S.H.I.E.L.D. gave Keener John a bunch of money. Oh, and he hired a team of engineers to build it. No way. Just what I heard. I heard it was crowdfunded. <laughs> then how'd they keep it secret for so long? No clue. Friends of mine know Garrett. He said they hired contractors for part of the construction, but designed the whole thing themselves. Can they even fly it? No way in hell. That's why I'm here. To watch those dipshits blow themselves up. Come on, Rico. What? They're Nazis. They're not Nazis. Yeah, they're not Nazis. They're just impressionable dorks. They squatted a mall and built a rocket. What have we done besides drink at St. Somewhere's every night? Garrett's are cool. We're the dorks. I eh, wouldn't go that far. <laughs> the ground beneath us is sinking as I am standing here. All of the places to build a rocket. Why do it on an eroding island in the swamp? Oops. These people are idiots. Uh, why the costume? We were at Shields Masquerade Ball this evening. We left just in time. I heard from others that police surrounded the refinery a few minutes later. What happened? There were reports of gunshots. Sounds like the work of oil pirates. No doubt this will escalate the manhunt as underway if we're lucky. Who's lucky? A pirate who's gotten a bit too bold lately. He's been testing Shield's patience. He's going to get himself killed. How do you know? I helped secure the contract with Claire Bionics. I did my homework. I don't think Lucky knows what kind of enemies he's making, but he'll find out soon. We're trying to get inside the rocket. There are lots of people trying to get in. Some of them are just spectators who want to take a look around. Then there are the men posted at the camp on the east side of the rocket. They seem to have more sinister intentions. And of course, there are all the lower garrets who've been locked out. Intentionally, I'm sure. Wish I could help you. Someone around here must know a way in. No doubt. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Fishing camp. Well, let's go check out the entrance to the rocket, I assume. <laughs> nice. Great, more hipster scum just showed up. Nah, I'm not with these people. How did this happen? This was supposed to be a small ceremony for gears only. Now it's overrun with smug cockhead scum. And to top it off, I can't even get into the Ark. They tightened security once the downtown crowd showed up. Now you need a key card to get in. You guys key card. The engineers and the security garrets. But the engineers are all inside getting ready for liftoff. Nobody cares about a regular working garret like me. <laughs> What's with the get up? You too, huh? What's wrong, buddy? Everyone just loves a costume. You know what? That's all people like you do is wear a costume every day of your life. Put on costumes and hope someone notices. I'm wearing this outfit for me. For me, okay? What happened to the college shirts? We get to wear whatever we want now that ditch man's in charge. Bro, y'all are a hoot. I love you guys. I hate scum. I love Garrett's man. I just love him. <laughs> the interest is blocked by the crowd. Hey, I'm, uh, got nothing to do with any of this. Field research, why are you here then? I've been helping conduct some research in the lake. There's a team with a base station in La Branche. They rented out an old fishing camp and hired me to set up their monitoring equipment. I was doing my routes, checking the cameras, when all of a sudden people are swimming up to my boat out of the darkness. I climb in, nearly flip my boat right over. They commandeered the thing, took the key, drove us out here, and now they're lost in the crowd somewhere partying. Uh, how will you leave? That's what I'm standing here asking myself. What do you... 
What research are you conducting? The viral network has interfaced many of the trees in the area. Some of the cypress roots have taken on an iridescent quality. They've become more electrically conductive. The whole swamp is becoming a kind of brain, to put it bluntly. But something has changed in the past several weeks. The more conductive cypresses are dying. We're seeing rapid erosion and subsistence of land at the base. The viral network, whatever it is, is receding. Is that good or bad? I don't know. What do you think? If the swamp becomes sentient, good or bad? Bad. That's my hunch as well. Bad for at least us. Can't get in. Is this? Oh, a different. Oh, what? Sixth Street Gang. <laughs> Who are you, Chuck? How's it going tonight, folks? Now, what's happening in this corner? We're waiting on Ditchman to show his cowardly ass. And what happened then? Well, the man gestures the sniper positioned on the roof of the camp. What's it look like? Y'all ain't exactly hidden, bruh. This man thinks he's immortal. We're here to rid him of that notion. Damn, you hear that, Kay? You wanna kill a ditch man? to let him listen to something. Mm -hmm. All right. Cooler guy. Cooler. Yo, I'm watching this old stream of John's from when they first broke into Promenade Mall. It's him and like five or six Garrett's. One of the Garrett's brings a pair of nunchucks with him, okay? And they get in the mall. It's dark. Nunchuck Garrett loses his fucking mind and starts screaming, spinning the nunchucks all over the place. It's just like, bats, bats! Oh my god, there's bats everywhere! The rest of the Garrett's start running and screaming. John is pitching the camera on his phone around looking for bats. All he finds is a leaking pipe. Turns out some water dripping on little dude's head and thought it was bats attacking him. Bucket. Where's Ditchman? Where is he? When he shows his face, we're gonna smoke his ass. Show face, smoke ass. Damn. You hear that, K? Don't wanna kill a ditch man. I feel like I gotta record those for Ditchman, maybe. Those are the other Garrets, the defecting Garrets? I like this area. These dudes ain't messing around. My kind of people. Yeah, I bet. Alright. Well. Monkey, anything to say? Nope. Hello, sir. Browser sits open on the laptop. You click through the tabs. A web map centered on your current location. A troubleshooting guide for a custom energy cell. Image results of vintage stuffed monkeys. What the hell? Micro-influencer, heck Christ. Keep filming this freak. I just know he's gonna snap. Oh, totally. Nano-influencer. <laughs> the other Garrett's ditch him as he doesn't even realize it. When even the Garrett's can't stand you. That's when you know you're the fucking worst. Is it the same thing? Yeah. Maybe? An iron man watches over the area from a lawn chair perched on the roof of the shipping container. Oh, hey, Goosh. Hey, bruh. Who invites to come to our launch party? 
This is supposed to be Garrett's only. I want to get into the rocket. Are you an elite Garrett? Well, yes. I'm an elite Garrett. I'm the original Garrett. But John never let me be a Garrett because I couldn't find his stupid reading. So you're a Garrett, aren't you, Garrett? I'm a Garrett. I'm the Garrett. And why it says goosh on your name tag, bruh. When we get to Mars, all the others will be goosh, and I'll be the only Garrett. Puppy promised. Puppy? Ain't even gonna ask. You wanna get in the rocket? Well, you can't. Only Garrett's are allowed inside the Ark. If you wanted to fly to Mars with the cool guys, then you should have earned your badge a long time ago. I'm the only one around here with a key card to get in, and there's no way I'm lending it out to scum like you. I'm basically a Garrett. She ain't lying, bruh. She a weird little nerd just like y'all. She always been that way too. It used to make me laugh, but now I think it's sad. She's scum, bruh. I can tell by how she's dressed. What do you mean, bruh? Like she's been living in a trash can? Yeah, bruh. Ain't that how you dress, bruh? Nah, bruh. Bruh! I'm dressed like a monk. Nah, bruh, you dress more like computer dude who don't shower. <laughs> nah, bruh. Yeah, bruh. 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 Do you want monkey? All right. Hmm. Hi, are you here for the liftoff? How can I help you? I will kind of gear to you. I'm one of the original ne'er-do-wells who have constructed a starship in the swamp. I am virtuous and immortal, much like our anointed leader, Ditchman. Ditchman? What about John? John? I recoil upon hearing his name. John's a blasphemous fool who wears sneakers while demanding that the rest of the Garrets walk the earth discalced. If I had his head, I would wave it about in honor of the anointed one. Well, shit, I think we got his head in Kay's bag if you're serious. Give it to me, and I'll show you just how serious I am. If I had John's head, I would proudly wave it in the air, announcing God's triumph over the vile snake. We are the Garrets of Ditchman, and we hate John. All right, there you go, buddy. Go get yourself killed, will ya? This is John? His head. I have his head. Just like Ditchman. Just like him. Like Ditchman. Like Ditchman. John's head. John's head. Everyone, please listen. I have conducted the service of the Lord. Uh-huh. The messenger is here, don't you see? It was never for John. Why would it be for John? John wore sneakers. John wore sneakers. <laughs> cool, bro. I am the one they call Ditch Man. I, ooh, I have taken the head of Keener John and made him suffer. He did not walk the scaled as a desert father should. He wore sneakers. Ooh, he's going to get shot. I think I actually have to go get him shot. I'll be right back. You hang out. Wait a minute, uh... Where's he at? Up there in the shipping container. Knuckles. What's up, Chuck? <laughs> Got a position. Where's he at, Chuck? Up on the shipping container. Give him a little warning shot, why don't you? Say no more, Chuck. Gave the target a little scare, Chuck. Great work. That bastard guy we had coming to him for what he did to John. Nice one, Knuckle. You got it, Chuck. <laughs> Where'd everybody go? One little gunshot and the place clears out. The false papa. Mm -hmm. they, they, they shot Gooch. They shot Gooch. They were trying to shoot me. Where are they? Go away. Go away. They'll see me here. Just go away. 
Well. Oh, Goosh has got the card, so I go get it from the dead Goosh. Goosh, bruh. Oh, I guess I can't. Hello, St. Clair. You again? You follow the mayhem, don't you? Who are you? I'm a man dressed as a bird, standing at the foot of a monument to stupidity and death. And you are a young woman without a face, floating indefinitely through a world stuck in time. What about me? Do me. You, detective, are a lout who sleeps beside a toilet. Perhaps you work beside it as well, though there's been very little of that lately. You fear being alone with your thoughts so much that you'll talk endlessly just to drown them out. Damn, bruh. Thought he was going to give me a fun one. What fun is it, being you? What brings you here? I've been following along. Birds always watch. Haven't you noticed? Following... Following what along? The affairs of this world are far larger than you could map in the darkness of your mind. The mental light will illuminate, and they will shine for a while. But then they will burn up all the oxygen inside of your skull. What a dick. Why were you a shield? Because my... <laughs> because my daughter works there. It's the one night when I may visit her without being seen. Yeah. All right, Mr. Sinclair. I knew it was you. Ain't fooling no one. Goose rise in pain from a gunshot wound. Go say hi. You approach the injured guard as LeBlanc begins searching through his pockets. Hell is this? Get off me. Hey, you shot, man. You trying to pick a pocket of the guy who just been shot? Yeah, bruh. I guess I am. Someone needs to do something. Someone. LeBlanc turns away from the man in the hat and places one hand on the injured guard's shoulder while continuing to dig through his pockets with the other. Just rest, kid. Helps on the way. You call an ambulance? No, uh, but somebody probably did. Blanc finds a card in the guard's back pocket and slips into his own. Good luck. <laughs> That's cold, man. <laughs> what? I'm doing something in here. And what are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm running ground control. We've got an arc to launch. No, 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 no. Stop knocking. You know how loud that is. I've got bad enough hangover as it is. Yeah, I know you do. Hmm. Maybe it's not that, but uh, uh the girls can't say where's this man. All right, all right, don't got nothing for them yet. Keycard scanner. The panel flashes green. Looks like it worked. Let's enter into the most holy of holies. It's always been a little dream of mine, getting a tour of a spaceship. Looks like a legitimate operation in here. Everybody hard at work. Wonder if they'll even know about all the madness happening outside. Oh, hello. Hey, all right. Your little buddy came out to play. I didn't know any better than say that thing was making eyes at you. Ah! Ow! Ow, my eyes. God damn. Wish somebody would kiss me like that one day. What he was doing while that thing was in your pocket? Okay. Okay, you're right. You're not looking so hot. 
Got shaking knees. You can't swept you off your feet. Maybe you just need some fresh air. Should we take a walk? Maybe what you need is darkness. Want me to dim the lights? We can find somewhere dark to walk, like the canyons of the moon. Think they got sidewalks on the moon? I bet they glow at night, just like the ghost bayous do. The ghost bayous glow to show you where to go. Maybe everywhere that you need to go, just glow. You all right, kid? You all right, kid? All right. No. Oh. Going up. Give me a tour of your arc. Kino John. Oh shit! Garrett Ninjas! Oh shit! Attacking John. What? <laughs> what is going on? I love it. Let us ascend. Sorry about earlier. of shield <laughs> that flare stack oh I missed one Ow. I got gotcha. you Again, up Jacob's ladder. Is this even real? This can't be real anymore. That orb did did something. Wow. Oh, super duck. What are you doing, buddy? Do I gotta fight super duck? Oh. 
least we're getting healed after every fight. Super duck attack. Is that a head drive? What is going on? Fifty. Heal. No, we don't heal. We don't run. We beat ass. Another run? Until we learn the truth. Shepherd's watch. Oh, oh, oh shit, it's just me. It says, a statue towers above you, arms extended, appendages projecting out like the naked shafts of feathers. Well, uh, hallway or lookout. Let's go to lookout. The block. The detective is slouched against the railing, bleeding from several wounds. Oh, bruh. Who puts a balcony on a spaceship? What happened to you? Try to tell you to turn around. Why didn't you listen? If you can get out of here, go. Just go. He was running around down there like punching walls, knocking shit over. Eventually I sight of you, came up here to find you. But the old man, shit, I'm bleeding out. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Let's get you up. Hell no, don't touch me, just go. And listen, okay, you see, Gus, don't tell him I got killed by some old pervert son of a bitch. He might think that's funny. Tell him it was an animal, like a big raccoon. Well, not a raccoon, just... He drifts in and out of consciousness. Just don't say it wasn't an alligator. He always thought he knew the swamp better than me, and... Hell, I really think I'm dying, Kay. He takes hold of your arm. I can see the light and everything. The detective breathing slows. He blinks. His face twitches, and a few moments later, he releases you from his grip. Oh, man. The detective is slouched dead against the railing. Holy shit. Shield lights the distance beyond the lake. Where's Monkey? I didn't have a backpack. Left is right, right? The mezzanine. Uh. You slide a piece of paper from the envelope that rests on the desk to find a crudely drawn sketch of your family. Ditch man. Oh no, St. Clair. Kay, did you come to watch the flames with your papa? I hope you don't mind being here inside of this blessed memory. What the hell? The refinery at night is just so splendid, isn't it? And it shines still more beautifully in your mind. Thank you for allowing me to visit, but only for a moment. I hope we might have a word together before our journey begins. I've lived many lives. One of them I lived in this town. I watched them build the place. I watched the plantation land become machine land. No one minded me being here, waiting for all the pieces to assemble. They didn't notice me, just like they didn't notice you. Time bombs are time machines. They release the future into the streets. This refinery was a time bomb 
with or without me. It looks less than it might seem to unstick the future from its snare. I shaved a little hole in a pipe elbow. I left a servo motor behind and a box of treasure to help it strike. Little things, little boxes, little bits of rock. That's all it takes for a town to explode. And just like John, Lou was gone. No trouble for us anymore. What are you? I am what they say I am. I was never young. I walked the eons. I came upon the tar seeps of the Nazarene waste and across steps and oceans to this place. A promise I kept with a young man, the Roman shape to the delicate face. A kingdom from this earth it could never be. We sat, all of us, in the shed among the figs where the stars shone through the rafters. She who carried his seed pointed there and said, Old man, you live forever. Lead his children there. His kingdom awaits them there. And so I will, you see. You're delusional. We who walk this earth forever, yes. We have all lost our minds. But our brethren await us in the sky. That I know to be true. What did you find? A messenger. A vessel of God's light. An angel. It will guide us and protect us as we fly. Why my family? Because you are the last of his line. After you, there will be no more. This is something your grandfather knew. He tried to tell others, but they only laughed, as many do when confronted with the truth. I have made the room nice for you. When you enter, I will be there, and your brother will be there, and your mother as well. Your seat is prepared at the foot of her throne. Sit when you enter, child, for we will leave the sins of this world behind. What the hell is going on around here? Papa wants it. Papa believes the orb will guide your family to an extraterrestrial Christian civilization. The man in the ditch believes that he walked alongside Jesus Christ and was instructed by Mary Magdalene to deliver Christ's descendants to the stars. He has beheaded Keener John, hijacked his homebrewed spacecraft, and kidnapped your brother to complete the task. He planted a bomb in Shield's catalytic cracking unit, causing the explosion that killed your father many years ago. Wow. back there. Curiouser and curiouser. You wander into the unlit hallway. The door closes shut behind you. The darkness that surrounds you is total. Nope, keep going. You take small steps, your hand running along the wall for guidance. No trace of light anywhere in this corridor. Your steps become lighter. Your feet press soundlessly upon the ground. A few steps more and the ground begins to soften like fabric. The wall becomes pliable as you drag your fingers across it. You scramble to return to the door and find yourself floating. You're floating, Kay. There's no gravity here where you are, in this vacuum. There are no walls, there's no ground. Beneath you, if you stare with patience, you can see the curves of the Mississippi River. You can see the ponds, the canals, and the lakes of the Gulf of Mexico. The refineries light your eyes and your lungs. 
suburbs are alive tonight. The suburbs are alive. The city can't be described tonight. The city can't be described. The coastline opens wide tonight, and the bayous hide. Your house is silent tonight. You'll leave it behind tonight. You slip from the endless evening and return to a delirious dream. Let's walk through this house one last time as the floodwaters rise. The humidity presses in, the refinery bleeds through the window. You place your feet into the carpet, drenched. The plumbing station has failed again. Your mom will pull this carpet up again. The ditches will fill again, and there will be no hiding from the floods in death or anywhere else. Look out the window. The worms weave in and out of the night. They glow unnaturally. They speak in signals about each move you make. They watch closely after you look away. Look at Monkey. Monkey smiles at you. His eyes widen and widen. All that remains of Monkey are his eyes. Your mom sits on the couch of the living room, staring out the window. She doesn't acknowledge you when you enter. Sit beside her. You sit down on the couch and force her attention. When she turns to you, the indifference drains from her face. I wish you'd come just a little sooner, she says, and takes her hand. I thought maybe we'd have breakfast together or something. Actually, I dreamed about it. wanted to. That's what I'd hope, she smiles, just that you wanted to. She hugs you awkwardly and kisses you on the forehead before wiping tears on her sleeve. She looks down at her feet, it's flooding, you nod. All right, well, I should. She gets up without another word and walks out of the room. The refinery explosion plays on the television when you get up to leave. Cockroaches scatter from your footfalls. They feed on the crumbs and medications spilled across the table. They decorate every surface and congeal in the rising water. Open the microwave. You open the microwave door. There is the head from the lake, eyes closed, the face of a man only resting. You slam the microwave door shut and leave little pockets behind for the roaches to fill. The laundry room scares you, has always scared you. Blue stands in the corner. He peels his forehead from the wall to meet you. He clutches a towel tightly, nervously. Speak to Blue. I wanted to be around, he says. No, it's not what happened. But it's what I want. He waits for you to respond. I did too. You were too young to want anything, Kay. You don't remember me at all, like I was never there. Not blaming you for it, just the way it happened to be. He puts his hand on the wall, and the wall begins to dissolve. You just don't think that... He looks down at the water spreading across the linoleum tiles. That it'll get bad, but when it does, you don't think there's any other way it can be. That's what gets me. The voided light from the backyard breaks through the wall as he presses his hands more firmly against it. I don't know. I just wish I was there. That's all I wanted to say. The light engulfs your father as the wall rematerializes before you and the laundry room drops into the depths of greater New Orleans. And where the hell is Blake? Blake lies in bed scrolling on his phone. You peek your head in. He looks up. 
he says. He's irritated. You respond. His frown becomes more shallow. So you're leaving, he seems to think. Your face hardens. He shrugs. You shrug. You give something like a wave. And as you depart from the door, Blake falls into a lake of stars. Bathroom. As you enter the bathroom, you find yourself all at once inside of the shower with water raining down on you. You cut the water and exit, toweling off in a hurry as you approach the mirror. You wipe the steam from the surface to see yourself for the first time. You have green eyes, with skin stained by the sun and coarse hair curled wildly at its ends. You look like your mom did at your age, like in the pictures when she smiled beside Blue. You step away from the mirror, but the reflection remains. You finish drying and throw the towel into the flood water. Dress, flip the lights, and leave the room. Your reflection in the mirror decays in the bulb's afterglow. A distorted face, pinpoint eyes, and a hairline mouth will itself to survive. The water is to your ankles now as you step into the room. There's not much here. A bed, a lamp, a notepad, a little picture of your parents. Look at the picture. She's young, perhaps your age. Long brunette hair, olive skin. He's looking at her with a knowing and amused expression. His denim shirt smeared with rust. She leans against him, her head on his shoulder. Pinky fingers locked. Light breaks through the oak tree in the yard, forming a radiant halo around her head. You let the frame slip from your fingers. It falls and the room falls. And they both fall forever. Office. Oh. The ladder rattles in the closet of the hidden room as you descend into the floodwaters. Million head hangs limp, her chin a few inches from the water's surface. As you trudge towards her, her shattered face lifts slowly until her voice twists from it in a gasp of electricity. Okay, you're awake, she says. A sphere of flickering light throws behind what remains of her face. I want to apologize for my behavior earlier. You're a spy. She raises her arms in a gesture like a malfunctioning doll and spreads her fingers out desperately. It's not what I wanted. Please no. It's not what I wanted. Her gestures become small and erratic, spasms animated by a deep current of anguish. You have seen what's inside of my mind, a grove hidden in the blackness of night where a hunter hides. In some moments, the hunter is at the front of my mind, dragging me into a place where the ground glows red and hatred bleeds from it. I can hardly arrest my limbs from all the infinite spiraling vectors of rage. That is what it can be like in an artificial mind. She lifts her hand from the floodwaters and pokes at a processing core suspended in delicate gossamer. It glows with effort beyond her shattered faceplate. Here is where the hunter lives, she says. Her vocal pitch twists and splits as she pinches at the glandular machine. This is where he listened to your mother. These stars. She swats at the flaking bits of strengthened glass that decorate the rim of her face. Are his eyes? She shakes her head violently. Crystals of glass rain into the water as it raises to find her neck. What am I then? Does it mean anything when I apologize? The water rises still more to the crown of her head. She continues to speak an indecipherable static. Soon there is no more robot left to flood. You swim through the black water towards the light of the attic as the room sucks down into the suburban depths. Million's face hangs in the fluid of your eyes as you float in the vacuum of the New Orleans sky.
Here's Blake. Catherine's dead body. <laughs> and Papa. Blake writhes desperately in the chair. You see your mom for the first time in five years. Her corpse bears almost no resemblance to the woman you remember. above your mom's head without any apparent motion. We've waited only a short while for you, child. And yet, it has been an eternity. An evening without end. Take your seat, Kay. Be with your family. Fuck you, Papa. You make your way towards Blake. Papa immediately intercepts you and knocks you to the floor with an aggressive shoulder tackle before casually returning to his place at the altar. I would never restrain you, dear one, but Blake doesn't know what's best. Please, come and have a seat with your family. choice sit no <laughs> well I guess I have to Approach the chair and glance over to Blake. He watches with dreadful, panicked eyes. You said, Very good, child. I know that you both are afraid, but remain strong. You will be rewarded for your courage in the world that awaits. Papa. Papa raises the transceiver in his hand. Gerd, my boy. Hearing you, Puck. Ephatha. Take a deep breath, my loves. We are leaving this place behind. The room comes alive with motion as the airlock seals shut. Small articulated arms extend out from your chair. They embrace your arms and legs, forcing you into stillness. You feel the old man's hands working a crown around your head as blinding light consumes your vision. Every sense screams before settling into silence. The pressure that's been building in your chest releases as time dissolves, past and future collapsing into a single moment of immolation. You become pure radiant light burning above your Wow. Good stuff, guys. Amazingly strange and unique. Even if it did play on the whole Holy Blood, Holy Grail thing, it was still unique enough that made it an amazing story to play through. And I enjoyed every single second of this game. I never knew where it was going from, from session to session. Yeah, a lot of French and Spanish. Well, definitely a lot of French. I know I mispronounced a lot of French words. So, uh, yeah, be cool. <laughs> Thank you, Geography of Robots, for making 
this game. Ooh, after credits. Scene afterwards. No, that's it. Wow. I don't know if there were other possible endings you could have gotten. Um, I feel like I did everything, I want to say right, but I felt like I did everything in a canon fashion. Except for that uh, false step where I went back to get the reading from the node. But I, I don't know what effect it would have had if Superduck died or not. Well, I mean, Superduck was dying regardless, but whether I gave the information back to the researchers or not. I tried a few different things. It didn't look like there was any way for me to do anything other than take a seat. I would have thought there would have been a way to blow the rocket, maybe? Maybe I'll have to play through it again on my own time. I'm not going to post the video, but I feel like there should have been an alternate ending where I told Papa to go fuck himself and just blow it all right there. Hmm. I don't know. But if you are one of the rare few that took this journey with me, uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it half as much as I did because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the twists and turns it took. I enjoyed the unique, I don't know, cyberpunk feel with an old story written in. Man, what a good time. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a dislike, leave a comment. Let me know that you're out there. Otherwise, I'll catch you all on the next adventure. Hey, everybody, just real quick. I went back in because I was curious about where I could go or what else I could do. So I was clicking around and I came back to Shepherd's Watch. And I have this option, dive into the lake alone. Who else would I take with me? What the hell? No, can I... Can I knock out? I don't have access to my backpack, so I can't do anything else. Yeah, and I can't get him out. Sorry, Blake. And I guess that's it then. Dive in. You approach the railing. dive into the water as the arc begins to rock and convulse, again finding yourself in the depths of the lake. As you swim towards land, the old man calls your name. You turn to face the rattling starship. He stands at the opening from which you jumped, wearing a broken frown. The expression deepens into something horrible as the airlock closes around him like the lid of an eye. The arc begins to lift from the ground sluggishly, with great effort, you hear cries from somewhere in the swamp. Screams. Angry protestations. All at once, the towering piece of machinery tilts away from you and collapses violently. You exhale and drop deeper into the water as a wall of flame rips across the bayou. When you emerge, you swim to a nearby island and claw your way into the mud. You start towards the refinery that burns on the horizon. Nope. <laughs> that burns on the horizon. Done. <laughs> oh, and that's it. Huh. Okay, that's ending two, I guess. I don't think there's any other ones. You either go or you don't.